gonna have some butter, but I was gonna butter, yeah, it's probably a good way. I was gonna have some bread, but then things stopped me from having a piece of bread. So All right, I'm just... ready. Now you ready? Okay, let's go. Do -do -do. If you try to make a documentary in Washington, you can find yourself filming events without any clear idea of what's gonna happen. Okay. We're following a congressman into a press conference an advocacy group has organized. I would love, number one, thank you. Thank you for coming. I was really looking forward to meeting all of you. Gracias por venir. Why can't we take, ¿por qué no tomamos de los jovencitos de los, y escuchamos testimonios? Bienvenido. Toma. Hola, Linda. Come on. My dad, he's a U.S. citizen. My, all my um, brothers and sisters are U.S. citizens too, but my mom. Now they want to take my mom away. She does, she's not a criminal. Uh, I just think it's unfair to our family suffer this way. How about, I'm gonna tell this to the president. What, what if one day immigration came to his house, took his wife? How would he feel? How would his kids feel? They are no one to take our families apart. Um, we'll just um, do the best we can today because I know that uh, we're all very affected by the uh, testimony of the children and their parents today. And uh, Ariana, you wrote this to me? You want to read it or you want me to read it? You want me to read it? It says, um, I'm Ariana Vivas and I'm nine years old. I wish my dad is here. I want to hug him and kiss him. Father Day is coming, and my dad is not here. So I could not give him a card. I need my dad so we can go to the park. Like we used to go before and celebrate for birthdays. We need immigration reform now. Keep our families together. It is so difficult to day in and day out hear these incredibly painful stories of the destructive nature of our broken immigration system. Today they're going to deport 1,400 people. And we're going to leave two to 300 American citizen children without a mom, American citizen children without a mom or a dad. And it goes and it doesn't stop. And the Congress talks and talks and talks and talks, but doesn't act. I'm gonna continue to work with my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to bring about comprehensive immigration reform. And I wanna be absolutely clear with everybody here, but I gotta figure out a way to get 218 votes so that we don't continue doing the kind of damage and the destruction that we've heard from the children. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we are called today by the ancients, the founders of the Republic. Are we really going to form a more perfect union? Immigration reforms are always controversial, but Congress was created to muster political will to answer such challenges. Today we didn't, but tomorrow we will. I yield the floor.
That's how our last film ended, with the collapse of an immigration bill in 2007. Eight years is a lifetime in American politics. Names are made and disappear. That bill turned out to be Senator Kennedy's last fight on the Senate floor. The end of an era, one we've been making movies about since before 9-11. The end of an era, the beginning of a polarization that would come to define Congress, but in no way the end of the national fight over immigration. We left Washington. We never meant to go back there. Until, well, pretty much the day after Obama was re-elected. The big conclusion was that the Latino and immigrant vote made his win possible. Republican Party leaders were saying the time is now, too. They saw that their party's survival might depend on fixing its image with the growing number of Latino and immigrant voters. So finally, the stars seem to have aligned for Republicans and Democrats in Congress together to fix the country's broken immigration system. By May, things are moving. In seven weeks, the Democratic majority Senate marks up and passes historic bipartisan immigration legislation. With the toughest enforcement provisions ever put in a Senate bill. And most controversially, a new, a clear path to citizenship for almost all of the 11 million undocumented. The yeas on this bill are 68, the nays are 32. The bill as amended is passed. That's the starting gun. Now the House has to pass its version of an immigration bill. If the House fails, the Senate bill expires with this session of Congress. And the next Congress has to start all over. So they've only got what's left of the two-year life of this session of Congress. And it's already July. So from here, what matters is all in the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. Everyone's expecting historic legislation. And we decided to see what would happen. We started walking those very long hallways of Cannon and Longworth and Rayburn. A lot of things have changed since we filmed here before. More bloggers, more reporters, more secrecy. Lots of doors didn't open, but we started. The need for immigration reform is urgent, and any attempt by the House to stall on this important priority for voters will be watched closely, especially by voters from immigrant, Latino, and Asian American communities who marched to the polls last year in support of immigration reform. Oh, they missed the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the different group of people. Okay, you're on mute. Okay. I'm going to tell them that you're on. And I don't even know what I'm... So here's what we're doing. Everything you've been saying today is great. Maria Elena Incapie from mm -hmm. Milk mm -hmm. is speaking now. She's moderating. So you can chill out for a minute. 
But then I can hang up after I finish? So, hold on. Hold okay. on. Let me go through it. I'm hungry. I know you're hungry. Can we get him something to eat, what maybe? I would love for you to stay for Q&A. The reporters all want to ask you questions. This is the office of Luis V. Gutierrez, Democratic congressman from Illinois. I believe the American people already... What we've been looking for was the story of how House Republicans were going to fix immigration. They hold the majority in the House. And we were kind of surprised ourselves, but it turned out Luis Gutierrez was a Democrat right in the middle of that Republican story. It's just the... We were surprised that the Group of Eight's big problem was coming from Democrats. But party leaders and the White House had decided that any bill from a Republican House would be too far right. To Republicans, Democrats' effort to slow down the negotiations feel like politics, not policy. The Group of Eight becomes seven, then fizzles out. For some Democrats, that's good. They want the House to have no choice but to call a vote on the Senate bill with its more generous path to citizenship. And that's what advocates want, too. This is a moral stand for us. Of course. How can we say we're OK with us getting citizenship and we're going to say, go ahead, deport our parents? Exactly. You could just no. say, okay. you know, here's why we I really we just want to focus on, like, the morality of this. They call themselves dreamers. These young people who were brought to the United States as children, grew up here and graduated from high school like everybody else, but all without legal papers. The name Dreamer comes from the Dream Act, a law that never passed in Congress, but would have given them legal status. So as we hear and we move into the House of Representatives in this fight for immigration reform. Now they're trying to be a political movement, lobbying for legislation on equal footing with Washington insiders like Frank Sherry, who's been a leading voice among the advocates for longer than we've been filming in Washington. Now, after an election in which Republicans have been spanked by Latino, Asian, and immigrant voters, they're saying, we got to do something. That's what Speaker Bader said. Inaction is not an option. So let's do something. Well, here's my suggestion. The Senate passed an important but imperfect bill on a bipartisan basis that has an inclusive path to initial legal status and an eventual and achievable path to citizenship. Right now in the House of Representatives, there are more than 218 votes for a similar bill. It's like, give us a vote, dudes. Our economy uh, continues to struggle with uh, slow economic growth, high unemployment, and stagnant wages. Obamacare is raising costs. It's making it harder for small businesses to hire. In short, it's a train wreck. And even the administration... It's like a ritual. That this law he starts every Thursday press conference this way, a quick Obamacare weekly rundown of the Obama administration's failures. The then the reporters the change the subject. With that, I'll take your question. Why? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thought you were going to lose. Right ahead. Ladies first. Well, thank you. Um, no, no, no. Said ladies, first. First. ladies first. Ladies <laughs> first. Uh, Remember, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. <laughs> why should Why should House Republicans be in favor of immigration reform that is that possibly includes legalization or citizenship for uh, illegal immigrants currently here, when the argument on the Senate side and among governors is it's in their political interest. But in the House, just, I mean, 75 percent of House Republican districts are majority white. The majority we have a broken Democrats immigration have. system. We got a broken system. It needs to be fixed. And I Her question is about the truth that's dawning on pretty much everybody. And 75% of House Republicans don't have to worry about Latino and immigrant voters. Everybody knows John Boehner wants to do an immigration bill. Nobody can figure out how he'll be able to. Speaker Boehner, uh, it's well known to you guys 
got your rear ends handed to you in the Latino community in the 2012 election. What does it say to the Latino community that the House GOP is stopping this pathway to citizenship after the Chamber of Commerce, the RNC, many other Republican groups have said, it's time to get this issue behind us, it's time to modernize. Do you not risk putting the Republicans at a disadvantage with the fastest growing electoral voting group for another generation? Well, I didn't know this was an opinion show here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm catching my breath. Now, we are not going to do the Senate bill. I have said this. Here's why he just April said that. 23rd. He can't do the Senate bill. For his Republican caucus, it's too identified with President Obama and the Democratic Senate. Even though he and the President talk regularly about immigration, it's a goal they share. What he needs is a House immigration bill the majority of his Republicans can claim as their own. But he's not going to get every Republican vote. So to actually pass a bill on the House floor, John Boehner is going to need some help from Democrats. Look at these shirts. They're very similar, aren't they? Look. <laughs> what do you think? Blue suits? Black shoes? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> we got the memo. Ladies and gentlemen, Luis Gutierrez. We need to say to them, Bienvenido a America, esta es tu oportunidad. And so my commitment to you is to work tirelessly. We have a bipartisan approach. I've learned from the leader in the U.S. Senate. We're working. You know, Senator, Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan said to me, pretty conservative guy, huh? Oh, I think you need to understand how critical this all is. He didn't see me in the gym two weeks after the election and say, God, you did everything you could, Luis, to stop me from being vice president. That's not what he said to me. You know what he said to me? He said, you're a Catholic, I'm a Catholic. We cannot have a permanent underclass of Americans exploited in America. And so all we're saying is there are men and women in the Republican Party, there are men and women in the Democratic Party. I ask and employ the Speaker of the House, let those men and women speak and bring justice to our immigrant community. Si ellos insisten en no permitir un voto, entonces nuestra comunidad va a tener que levantar sus voces de una manera... Maybe you've never heard of him. But in Spanish media, Luis Gutierrez is the best-known Latino politician in the United States. The thing about Luis is, he's a kid who was born in Chicago and only spoke English until he was about 13, when his parents decided to move back to the interior of Puerto Rico. So there he was, a foreigner, in a tiny little mountain village who couldn't get a date because his Spanish was so terrible. struggled for four years, until his high school realized he was their ace in the national English competition. He won hands down, and that was his big start. He came back to the U.S. for college, worked as a taxi driver, and finally got into politics in Chicago only after his house was firebombed because he'd been protesting corruption. We'd known the congressman since our last time in Washington but he's a lot more famous now. He makes his own political party nervous. He's made it clear he's more loyal to immigrants than he is to Democrats. To Republicans who want to do immigration reform, he's the Democrat they trust. One of those Republicans is Trey Gowdy, ex-prosecutor, Tea Party darling, the Republican chair of the House Immigration Subcommittee. Mr. Chairman, real sustainable immigration reform has proven elusive to prior Congresses. And there's an emerging consensus within this Congress, Congress that the current system is broken. And enforcing the law strikes me as a reasonable place to begin. I say over and over again because it has 
You can leave that there if you want. It could be a legalization component. And um, Gaudi said, uh, for those who arrived as children, I mean, if you listen to them, they're obviously talking about other components of a legalization. Right. I mean, this is a different place. Yeah. They're not saying this is all we're They went from the party, of we're for enforcement only, to, oh, don't worry, we're getting around to the other part. In other words, there's good stuff coming. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. It's been weeks since the Senate passed its bill, but no bill's even been introduced in the House. With the clock ticking, he's looking for any sign that Republicans will be open to writing a Republican bill he can support. His best bet is another member of the original group of eight, a conservative Cuban-American from Florida, Mario diaz Balart, who's also frustrated by the failure of the group. To move forward now, Diaz Ballard and Cesar Gonzalez, his chief of staff, are going to have to start over. And they're going to need an ally. That person is Paul Ryan, chairman of the powerful House Budget Committee. Gutierrez knows Ryan well enough to ask him to take the lead in writing a Republican immigration bill. We were hoping to film with him too, but Ryan's office wanted to stay under the radar. that the clock's gonna... I mean, you know, there is this kind of sense in the immigrant community, you know. First we were gonna do immigration reform, but then, oh, 9-11 happened. And then we were gonna do it, but then... There's always an excuse. There's always something, and then the fiscal crisis... What they're worried about is Latino and immigrant activists are getting impatient. On the outside, it looks like nothing is happening. The congressman is gonna keep encouraging Republicans on the inside while trying to lead the movement on the outside. There comes a point at which people are going to say, what the f What do we want? Immigration reform! What do we want? Yeah. What do we want? Nada sucede aquí, en ese edificio, en la Cámara de Representantes, si de afuera de ese Capitolio no existe una demanda. Everybody, if you're on that side, you're subject to arrest. <laughs> In Washington and around the country, advocates try to keep the pressure on. What we need is for some bill to be passed in the House. It's a campaign of confrontation and civil disobedience. Congressman John Lewis and other civil rights leaders join Gutierrez. Let's all stand together, right here. John, right here. Let's all stand together, right here, right here. I think it is news to my friends on the Republican side of the aisle that you don't win every battle around here. The place is tough and occasionally you get knocked down. On October 1st, Congress shuts down the federal government. 
in a fight with the president over Obamacare. In the end, Republicans lose, and they're furious with the president. Those on the other side of the aisle say they don't trust the president and can't work with him. Well, okay, fine. Then work with your colleagues on this side of the aisle. You know, there are 435 of us. We need 218 votes to pass a bill. And committed to it, I'm still committed to it. I've also made clear that uh, dealing with... The Becky always told us John Boehner's a true believer in immigration reform. You know, are you going to get the other 30 to 40 that aren't necessarily his caucus to vote for something like a reload? Well, John Boehner didn't get it done this year. But as December begins, there's still another year left in this Congress. The legislation the Republicans are working on is tough. Tougher than the Senate bill, with more punishment and more enforcement. But for Luis Gutierrez, ending the deportations is more important than a perfect deal that he believes is never going to happen. Democratic leadership worries Gutierrez will convince other Democrats to sign on to a bad deal and let Republicans score a political win with immigrants. Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi has called Gutierrez to meet with her tomorrow. Do you want to take half, both of them, worry about the other half later? Or? This is the, the, the fake, the fake gavel. The base? of the Democratic caucus? I'm, they're with me. Yeah. They're with me. Oh, yeah, they're with me. See, I think half of it is just personal. Nancy Pelosi likes being in charge, and they want to be in charge. And this happens in all movements. People want to be in charge. They see it coming to the pinnacle of success, and now they want to be in charge. Now, I'm going to tell Nancy Pelosi Wednesday morning, I said, you know what, Nancy? Don't tell me what it is people want. I have a funny feeling. I know better than anybody in this damn room what people want. Because I've been doing this for a year. I didn't wake up Johnny come lately at the end and say, oh, I left the Judiciary Committee 15 years ago, but now this is an important issue to me. It's precisely what they're worried about. Uh, but they need to be worried. The only way they're going is they have to be worried. And I'm going to tell them, do not think that I will not spend every last ounce of my energy and my voice to make sure that you gain absolutely nothing if you scuttle this issue. I will travel around this country and tell people, if you're going to vote for a Democrat, vote for them for the minimum wage. Don't vote for them because immigration, because they're undeserving. All last year, the president insisted he can't stop the deportations. Only Congress can. He's given John Boehner room to try to pass a bill at the cost of angering his Democratic base. Today's the day John Boehner starts. The annual Republican retreat will begin discussion on those principles that Becky's written. They balance strong enforcement with new legal visas, but they also hold out hope for the undocumented that they can become right with the law. Yeah, a lot of tweets. Boehner on GOP conference on immigration. These standards are as far as we are willing to go. Which, since they're so vague, <laughs> means absolutely nothing. The evangelicals are happy. The House GOP leader's immigration plan doesn't rule out citizenship. <laughs> Gee, that's, you would think that that would be kind of obvious, but it's not. Tamar Jacoby calls the principles a historic breakthrough and a game changer. Steny Hoyer, number two man in the House. House Democrats are ready to do our part and work across the aisle. You know, look, it's tough. People are getting screwed. You know, someday they'll be passing congressional resolutions apologizing to how many immigrant families have been ripped apart by the awful stuff we've done in the last 20 years. And we're not going to get a perfect bill. And more people are going to get hurt. But we have a chance to pass legislation. No, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to tr transform immigrants here without papers who are considered criminals by many into human beings who are part of the family. The 
Republican 60-40 anti, but it's loud versus thoughtful. Even though many members were fine with the principles by the end of their discussion, the majority wasn't ready to leap on immigration in a midterm election year. A week later, the speaker says it's going to be hard to move forward blames the president. The Ryan diaz Ballard whip count goes on hold. We started filming in South Carolina around then, thinking that getting out of Washington would help us figure out why it's so hard for House Republicans to do something about immigration. And you don't get caught up in this Washington crap where you turn into something different. You know, you, you're still with the same people you'd be when you were home anyway. Mick Mulvaney got elected as part of the Tea Party wave in 2010. He went to Congress expecting to make a difference, to get things done. But you're also good. You hear, all you hear is how the Democrats are shooting themselves in the foot on all the issues. Just, I mean, the, the time is fantastic for the Republicans. But yet, Republicans are not doing anything to say, what are we going to do about those issues that they're, they're screwing up? Here's why we have that problem. And this is one of the reasons I was one of the 14 members who did not vote for John Boehner for speaker. John Boehner got his job by doing nothing. John Boehner got his job in 2010 by being not Barack Obama. The, the pushback against Obamacare and the bailouts and the stimulus was so strong that it, it brought the Republicans into power. So here's John Boehner thinking, OK, well, I just didn't do anything and I won. There's a business model I can understand. John Boehner does it, and he tells you, my job is to keep, you know, to keep the majority. Okay, that's uh, his job is to make sure that the house runs and we 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 pass stuff, right? So um, can I say when y'all are taping? I hope y'all can edit that out. So. His town hall events these days usually focus on questions about Benghazi or impeaching Obama, but a group of young local pastors asked him to talk about something else. I said, I want to have a presentation without saying that I'm pregnant or a felon, because those are very easy things to screw up in Spanish, so. Le gusta el presidente. No. Es muy difícil trabajar en Washington hoy en día en cosas muy simples. Y por eso no creo que vamos a tener una vota este año. I'm trying to get my people energized around something that doesn't really exist right now. I think, I think we're down less than 5% of a chance, so. I mean, we thought maybe Thanksgiving, maybe December, and then, you know, they hired Becky and they seemed to be working in the back room, and so there was that, that last faint hope. But I think holding on to hope now borders on There's the... nothing good happening here. Actually, there's just nothing happening here. Happening here. The Dreamers have a history that got them here. Right now, they have a temporary protected status because during Obama's re-election campaign, they attacked the president and staged sit-ins in his campaign offices. He finally responded with an executive order, DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. The lesson they learned from that win is that political pressure works. I want to ask you to stand 
up if you lost a sibling to deportation? I want you to remain standing and for all of us to look around. If you've lost a friend to deportation, stand up. Look around. If you fear, if you fear you lose someone you love to deportations, stand up. Is that what we're fighting for? Yes. We're fighting because we want our families to be together. We don't want to be afraid that they might be taken from us. That's what this is about. And we've had a long year, right? We had all of 2013 pushing for immigration reform. We, it was passed in the Senate. We've been fighting in the House to get them to take up a vote. I mean, since June, right? The Senate passed the bill in June and then still nothing. So how many of you think that the GOP really wants to get this done? And that they're committed to getting it done this year? Raise your hand. Look around. So do we also know that, I mean, based on what you have communicated to us in your regional retreats, you believe that there's one person who can give you what you want. Right, who is that? Obama. Obama. Say it loud. Obama. So you believe that Obama can stop that pain. You believe that Obama can stop the deportations. But President Obama says that only Congress has the power to stop deportations. Oh. I say <laughs> He's about to hit two million deportations and he's telling us that we have to wait for Congress to act. And mind you, we were, you know, we were on that, we were on that track. But we've now reassessed and we've made a choice, I think, as a network, that there's nothing happening there. And we can't waste our time. We want to go after the administration full force for their deportations. <laughs> do you believe that we can stand up and fight back? Yes. What do we do when our families are under attack? Stand up, fight back. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. You don't often get to be there at the historic moment. But that speech was the pivot. It launched the strategy that changed the year. United We Dream threatened a campaign to go after Democrats and other organizations who didn't come out against the deportations. The largest Hispanic advocacy organization in the country, the National Council of La Raza, NCLR, took note. Political gridlock. One week after saying he was ready to move forward with immigration reform, Speaker Boehner seems to have pulled the plug on legislation in the House. There's widespread doubt about whether this administration can be trusted to enforce our laws. And it's going to be difficult to move any immigration legislation until that changes. Seriously? Failing to enforce our laws? For us, this president has been the deporter in chief. Hoy en el noticiero Telemundo como deportador en jefe califica el Consejo Nacional de la Raza el presidente Obama la Casa Blanca. El presidente Barack Obama ante las críticas fuertes críticas por los casi dos millones de deportados durante su gestión. Deportador en jefe es una frase tan fuerte que hasta la. From the minute NCLR president Janet Mergia said it, deporter in chief, the dominoes started to fall. The deporter in chief is now. <laughs> By week's end, nearly every high-ranking Democrat, right up to Chuck Schumer, had shifted from blasting Republican inaction to criticism of the White House.
It's Monday, June 9th. After months of work and countless one-on-one -on -one conversations, Paul Ryan and Mario Diaz-Balard have carefully crafted a bill they know the majority of Republicans can agree on. They have the votes. They make an appointment to see Boehner on Thursday. Tuesday, June 10th. Primary season's almost over. Washington's slowing down a little. The Diaz-Ballard office meets for drinks after work to celebrate their whip count. Then, it's 9 p.m., and a piece of news almost unimaginable in Washington breaks. A primary race that no one's even watching. Eric Cantor, the House Majority Leader, the guy widely expected to take over John Boehner's job, has just lost his primary to a political unknown. Dave Bratt, the challenger, got a huge campaign boost when conservative radio host Lara Ingram adopted him and made a hard line on immigration his main campaign issue. When they thought about it, everybody on the Hill knew there were plenty of other reasons for Cantor's voters to dump him. But it was Bratt's opposition to immigration that got all the credit. The show must go on. The show must go on. Oh, man. Uh, Who the hell knew? S somebody deserves to be fired today. Yes. I was like, why am, Why is it such a blow? Why does it feel like when the bill went down in 2000, you know, like one of those moments where you're like, oh, you just feel like you were buried under bricks. It's because I didn't want it to fail this way. Like, this was not part, you know, like, fail after a struggle, what, you know, whatever, but not fail like this. Neither. Not exactly, but did I plan it? No. In our conversations with folks, we, we started to whip it. And we were asking yes, no. And we were getting the yeses. By the end, your account was high enough that you felt like you could take it to the speaker. The speaker already knew <laughs> what our count was. Yeah. He found out. The news about Cantor wasn't the worst news of the week. Tonight, disturbing new images of the unprecedented crisis along our southern border, where thousands of young children are surging across, many without any parents, and the U.S. basically doesn't know what to do with them. The president is likely to take his pen and his phone and do something. His critics say that's how we got in this position of these children and their parents believing they could cross with impunity. What say you? Most of those who have made it to our border, 60,000 this year, a quarter of a million estimated over the next two years. In just about a week, 7,212 Republican primary voters in Eric Cantor's congressional district and nonstop media coverage of a border invasion told Republican House members all they needed to know. The whip count commitments evaporated. That pretty much finished off chances for an immigration bill. And only a couple of dozen people knew how close it had come. It um. This is for the special World Cup edition. So do you like the red car ejection, Susan? Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's current. <laughs> it's very hip. <laughs> it is choreography and the use of props. So there's, you know, there's always a down. Whoa! Oops! <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, he has to do it like very convincing. We have to show him a few videos of yes. happening. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I feel like you, I think we should just, maybe we should just say to Republicans, you don't like it? In the absence of You don't reform. like it, and then freaking change it. Pass a law that you'd like to see. Yeah. Nobody is stopping you from meeting on this. Nobody's preventing you from coming up with the solution that you think is best for America. So come up with it. You losers. <laughs> you lamos. <laughs> A year ago this Friday marks the one-year anniversary of passage of the bipartisan Senate immigration bill that passed with 68 votes in the Senate. You know, Madam Speaker, I kept hoping the better angels in the Republican Party would tap down the irrational and angry angels blocking reform the American people want and deserve. And then the last straw. As violence and poverty and gangs drive families out of Central America, I see Republican members of Congress and their allies in talk radio and TV, taking advantage of a humanitarian crisis to score cheap political points. I gave you the warning three months ago, and now I have no other choice. You're done. No, no, no. Get the oh. You're done. <laughs> Leave the field. Too many flagrant offenses and unfair attacks and too little action. You're out. Hit the showers. It's the red card. Republicans have failed America and failed themselves. Mr. Speaker, it is now time for the president to act. A lot of people were devastated when Luis Gutierrez gave up on legislation. But Luis Gutierrez always had his plan B. They talked all summer and into the fall. There's still no final decision on how many people the president's executive order will cover. The congressman wants him to go big, to give as many people as possible a legal protection from deportation, even if it's temporary. Inside the White House, the work is slow. Secretary Johnson's getting pushback from Justice Department and White House lawyers, whose concern is keeping the president within legal bounds. It is anecdotal, and that to the extent that we get it from many sources, right? Oh, no. Do you want the extra calendar? Give me a second. What do we got now? Congressman Mulvaney often conducts his town halls online. Next one is Penny Smith. Penny. Is there anything done about illegal people entering South Carolina? Uh, okay. Uh, at Penny. It's a 15-word question with a thousand-word answer. Short answer is no. But she does say thank you for the time for doing this. Yeah. She followed up. Anytime, Penny. I will always wonder as to whether or not what happened on the southwestern border was done on purpose, mm -hmm. or was it an accident, because I don't know. I don't have a gut feeling one or the other as to whether or not the president feared that there would be some type of large agreement that he wasn't involved with and that he didn't want it to go the way that it was going. I don't know. Yeah. Bennett, the question was really, do you want to do it now? Do you want to do it later? Or do you want to do it never? And I think the thing that was encouraging was before the meltdown on the southwestern border, it's fair to say that there were a majority of Republicans who wanted to take it up now. Uh, I was absolutely convinced that there were Republicans and, and Democrats in the House that wanted to fix the problem. And that's, that's kind of invigorating if you stop to think about it because so many times we face all these challenges and you're not really convinced the other side wants to fix it. I'm convinced that, that people in both parties wanted to fix immigration. And we haven't yet. Okay, so anything else so for uh
anything else for a while. Dreamers had started out last year demanding a new law that would give citizenship to millions. Now they're just hoping the president can stop the deportations. Like everyone is trying to work with limited information. So we should just assume that something's gonna, some deep, because the press is going crazy over this. It's now November 19th. Tonight, Congressman Gutierrez will have dinner at the White House. Tomorrow, the president will announce his plan. People don't have the details yet, but Republicans who've wanted immigration reform know executive action will make it harder to start again. Look, the positive thing uh, is that I think it'll stop some separations of, of families, of American children whose parents uh, might be uh, deported. I think that's positive. Um, but it doesn't do it long term. It doesn't secure the border in a real way. It doesn't fix the system that has created the crisis that we have today. So it is, at best, a short-term band-aid. At worst, it could make it worse, and it could make it very difficult, even more difficult, uh, to actually fix a system that we all agree has to be fixed. He said, I got four million. Uh, it's a down payment. I'd like to do more. But I couldn't use economic arguments. I couldn't extend the I had to use humanitarian arguments. They needed to have some kind of uh, presence in the United States. I wanted to be like, here, thank you, this is great, because this is what we have to do. This is what we have to do. We have to declare victory. Our people are tired of one defeat after another. We go out there quibbling about this, they're gonna say, well, Luis Gutierrez dijo que no. And that's how they're gonna feel. I think we have to use who we are and understand who we are within this. And then at the end, I told them, Mr. President, I want you to walk out of here with the assurance, and that's why I'm saying it publicly in front of everybody else, that I'm, you're gonna be, you're gonna be proud to have me as one of your top supporters. So, so yes. When you see someone tell them they're desperate to talk to you. All right, let's do it. Guys, look what I got, bro. That's great. Look what I got. Look what I got. Napkin. Oh. oh. Shh. Oh. <laughs> I went like this. Mr. President, I love being at this meeting so much. You're so great. And I gotta leave, sorry. <laughs> you are. It's a historical oh, meeting. Yeah. yeah it's a good Come thing on. The, it's a good thing that the doorknobs were attached to the door. <laughs> it's a historical <laughs> meeting. Right? Okay. I mean. He's expressed himself this evening. I have been, if not, one of the toughest critics of this president. Certainly among the toughest critics of this president when it comes to immigration policy. I got to tell you, tomorrow's going to be a historic evening. Okay. Voy a tratar. Voy a tratar. Inglés es mi primer idioma. Ahora tengo que traducir. No es tan fácil. Um, este es el presidente por el cual yo voté. A estar peleando por justicia para millones y millones de indocumentados. Personas que no tienen nadie quien lo apoye. La misión no está completa. Pero yo creo que debemos pensar en lo positivo y en el triunfo. Nosotros llevamos décadas. My fellow Americans, tonight I'd like to talk with you about immigration. For more than 200 years, our tradition of welcoming immigrants from around the world has given us a tremendous advantage over other nations. But today, our immigration system is broken, and everybody knows it. 
When I took office, I committed to fixing this broken immigration system. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. So we're going to offer the following deal. If you've been in America for more than five years, if you have children who are American citizens or legal residents, if you register, pass a criminal background check, and you're willing to pay your fair share of taxes, you'll be able to apply to stay in this country temporarily without fear of deportation. You can come out of the shadows and get right with the law. We're not going to deport you. I know the politics of this issue are tough, but let me tell you why I have come to feel so strongly about it. These people, our neighbors, our classmates, our friends, they did not come here in search of a free ride or an easy life. They came to work and study and serve in our military and, above all, contribute to America's success. Scripture tells us that we shall not oppress a stranger, for we know the heart of a stranger. We were strangers once, too. My fellow Americans, we are and always will be a nation of immigrants. That's the tradition we must uphold. That's the legacy we must leave for those who are yet to come. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless this country we love. Nobody quite knew what would happen next. And in a way, you could say that still. Two weeks after the president's speech, 17 state attorneys general filed a lawsuit against his executive orders. Almost a year later, the whole thing is still tied up in the courts. So America's immigration battle goes on. But those new voters, those Latino and immigrant voters who made such a difference in 2012, their numbers are growing. And there's another election coming next year. Frontline is made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Additional support is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to heightening public awareness of critical issues. The John and Helen Glessner Family Trust, supporting trustworthy journalism that informs and inspires. The Wincote Foundation. And by the Frontline Journalism Fund, with major support from John and Joanne Hagler. Major support for Frontline and for Immigration Battle is provided by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, committed to building a more just, verdant, and peaceful world. More information is available at macfound.org. Additional support for Frontline is provided by the Ford Foundation, working with visionaries on the front lines of social change worldwide at fordfoundation.org. And for this program, by Just Films at the Ford Foundation. And by the following. Corporate funding is provided by Brigham and Women's Hospital. For more on immigration battle, visit our website at pbs.org frontline. Immigration Battle is available on DVD. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Frontline is also available for download on iTunes.